Well, I'm glad that uh, we're able to um, expand the ISTVS activities also at this very conference um, to the extraterrestrial worlds, so the planets outside the Earth, where we have a large number of technical papers in the robotics and rovers uh, sessions this time. But in particular, we're having a distinguished speaker from the planetary science community involved in the ongoing, still ongoing NASA Mars Exploration Rover mission. Uh, Professor Raymond Arvidsson, or Ray, uh, as I've come to know him over the years, uh, I can say um, from Washington University in St. Louis. Ray is the head of the Earth and Planetary Sciences Department at Washington University, and he's the McDonnell Distinguished Professor uh, in St. Louis. And Ray is a veteran of a number of uh, Mars landing missions. Uh, he's been involved in the Viking landers to Mars in uh, 1976. Uh, the mission went on for six years in total. And Ray has been involved with the camera experiment on the landers, uh, doing geology, but also physical properties of the Mars uh, surface and near-surface soils on that mission. Um, and then um, there has been a slack in Mars missions uh, worldwide ever since Viking, because Viking was so successful uh, in a way, but also in a way um, to some scientists. Viking was disappointing because no life was found on Mars. No living microbes could um, unambiguously be identified on that mission despite life detection instruments that were carried by the Viking landers. Uh, so it was only in 1997 that the next um, robotic space uh, probe to land on Mars was launched, which was the Mars Pathfinder mission. And there was a small rover uh, on that mission, the Sojourner 10 kilogram, 11 kilogram micro rover and Ray was involved in the mission. Um, and then um, it was so successful that there was kind of a euphoria, and people believed that it would be possible to return samples from Mars to Earth uh, as early as 2005. So planning got underway for a first Mars sample return mission which would have involved rovers, long-range rovers, uh, on Mars to collect the samples, to allow sample selection before collecting them. And Ray was involved in preparations for that mission, uh, involving a suite of instruments called the Athena Science Instrument Package on those rovers. Um, and Ray was instrumental, actually, in the field testing preparations. Uh, for um, Mars rover missions led by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and Ray was uh, uh, guiding the field testing using prototype rovers in terrestrial settings and he very much contributed to the art and science of robotic field geology uh, which is how do we do geology remotely from Earth, with scientists, geologists being on Earth, but then controlling a rover hundreds of millions of miles away from the Earth uh, on another planet. And it's not easy. The rovers do have some autonomy, um, but they cannot do the science autonomously. The rovers cannot tell whether a particular rock is interesting for study or not. This is what up to now is the tasks of the people on the ground. Um, but apart from the science, Ray has always been, um, of course, uh, interested in the mobility of these rovers and the physical properties of the terrains. Um, so, and also then on the Mars Exploration Rover mission, which then came out of um, two failed Mars missions in 1999, which led to the uh, cancellation of plans for the early Mars sample. Return. Um, following that failure um, or change in plans, the Mars Exploration Rover mission, or MER for short, rose out of the ashes 
um, and it's a hugely successful mission involving two rovers of 180 kilograms each, launched in 2003, landed on Mars in early 2004, mission designed to last for only 90 days on the surface. Um, and as most of you know, the two vehicles, Spirit and Opportunity, um, have been operating for much, much longer. Uh, by now, we have lost Spirit after about um, six years of operations, whereas Opportunity is still going strong. And um, Ray will be talking to us about the accomplishments of the mission and in particular of the Opportunity rover and which is now um, a very exciting stretch of the mission, um, not planned for of course, but we've been driving, I say we because I happen to be um, lucky to be involved in the mission as well as a science team member. Um, so the mission, um, the Opportunity rover has been directed towards a large crater on Mars uh, for more than two years. Uh, it took two years of driving to get to this particular feature and we have made it. We got there in early August and um, it's a whole different mission at this point because it allows access to um, this, this particular area where the vehicle is, allows access to much older rocks than was possible um, in, along the previous uh, traverses of opportunity. So Ray, it's your time. Your turn for the St. Christopher Lecture. Thank you, Good.